Hey guys, Pat here. Today, I want to talk about something that I've been trying to live through, trying to deal with, and that is, do we still have time to play video games as we get older? Or, I guess as time moves on and video games change, do we actually still really have the time to play through a whole single player campaign? And that really stems into why companies, well, they're not making single player games anymore. It's all about the interconnected experience. It's all about multiplayer. It's all about quick fixes. It's all about quick wins, quick games, team games, or at least something that can get you excited and happy very quickly. And then you can either do it again or move on to do something else in your life. So what I want to talk about is, well, you played a lot of games when you were a kid. You might have played single player games because there might not have been any internet. There might have been some multiplayer games and once that happened, the whole world changed. And I wanna talk about my experience about that and the first time I ever played an online game. And I'm not sure if you guys know my age, but my first multiplayer game, and this might also stem from the fact that I was living in New Zealand and fast internet was hard to come by, but my first multiplayer experience was Call of Duty. Yes, the uh, the original one, number four, Modern Warfare 1, basically so COD 4, Modern Warfare 1. And, you know, I never even got to go to an intercat fave. I, I played at home, I've got the game, uh, I got the internet later on, and I was like, I might as well try the multiplayer side of things. And my heart was pounding, it was beating. when you see a person there and you shoot them and, and potentially you survive, hopefully. I remember I did for the first time. I, I got the kill, as they say, and I was just hooked. From then on, the adrenaline rush, the excitement, it was just, it was just absolutely fantastic. And from then on, I also realized that I played less and less single player games. While I still had the time, the multiplayer part of, of gaming really took over. Moved on to things like WoW, moved on to um, things like Dota, and then Heroes of the Storm as I aged. And then there was other multiplayer games, anything to do with shooting. Obviously I was playing, so all the Call of Duties. Battlefield came out. Uh, for me it was actually uh, Battlefield uh, 3 that got me hooked. I didn't get to play Battlefield 2 because by the time I got on, it was already kind of over and there was just really small servers and places. And well, number 3 was the one I played, then it was number 4, then it was number 1 and so on and so forth. So my personal experience was quite you know, recent into multiplayer games, and I realize now, especially now, the last single player game that I played was The Witcher 3, and I still haven't finished it. I'm still doing the side quests, I'm not doing the main quest, and the last time I touched it was over six months ago. So what's happening? What's happening to our time versus the multiplayer games versus single player games? Well, first of all, multiplayer games last a lot longer. If you have a multiplayer aspect of your game, your game will get played a lot more because once you finish single player, you're done, right? And most single player campaigns have gone from like a nice 10 to 15 hours, I'm talking about here like quick shooting games, to like six, five to six to even four hours in some cases. Obviously, RPG games are a lot longer, but they've all had their, you know, golden age where they've had heaps of game time and it's all gone smaller and smaller and smaller and I suppose that conversation came about also recently with Final Fantasy uh, that came out on Windows uh, on the 6th of March and basically people complained about how short the game was and how terrible the story was and how well overall it was beautiful and fantastic but the whole thing was compressed into a smaller package. We're used to watching movies and uh, TV shows and smaller little snippets, obviously the movies, larger snippets, and we can get a whole story of it. Like games, they still provide a lot more entertainment. So if you look at it, if you buy a movie for $20, let's say it's a DVD or a Blu-ray these days, it'll provide you potentially two hours. If you buy a game and you pay 60 to $80, you might get six hours out of it. Again, the value is about $10 an hour, but then think about the fact that this game has multiplayer. The value escalates quite rapidly into more hours spent using it. Therefore, the value that you've spent, uh, you've got more out of it. But I suppose the, the main issue here is that now that games have gotten shorter, the games that are very long, like The Witcher 3, have sort of become idols. 
while it used to be the norm to have large games, I mean, think Oblivion, think Morrowind. These games had huge time-wasting aspect, not just the small quests or the side quests, but the fact that there was so much to explore and see, and mainly, I guess, with RPG games. But The Witcher came out, it has over a hundred hours of potential content, depending how quick you do it, and they kept adding more, and that became the poster child or poster boy for um, RPG games and standard they should be hitting. Now we're at a phase where those games have their own place, but people are still not really playing single player games. I mean, look at Star Wars, they brought out some single player aspects, and again, they just fully went multiplayer. There is not just the fact that your game lives longer as a multiplayer game, but you can also make more money of it, and obviously the microtransaction things that I'm not really going to get into, but there is a viable aspect of having microtransactions that don't affect gameplay and affect it only in a visual way, so dresses, hats and so on, that's, that's a positive microtransaction, as much as spending money is, and the other is obviously not when you pay more money to be better at the game and people who haven't paid more are not as good as you. So, microtransactions and multiplayer games just work so well. Look at Dota, look at Heroes of the Storm. These guys are, you know, they're obviously uh, selling basically digital goods that don't actually exist anywhere else other than the game and it's dress ups or different skins and so on. The value of that is, well, you spend more money as you play, as you play more, you spend money and continue paying the company who continues to develop this game that could last more than five years. Comparably with a single player, it lasts maybe a year, it's popular for a year and then it all kind of falls down. And then the company has to make another game and another game and we get sick of the same game and so on and so forth. So, the industry has moved on to a more multiplayer centric uh, space. And to be honest, somebody who loves multiplayer, I really don't mind that, but sometimes I do want that single player experience. The problem with my past experience is that when I do try to get into some of these single player experiences, I find that I get bored very quickly or there's a distraction and I don't get the time that I wish to use and actually get that whole benefit of playing a game and really feeling good about myself, uh, relaxing and, and just letting go of everything. I don't get the amount of time I need to get that from a single player game, but from a multiplayer game, a quick match, 20 minutes in Rainbow Siege, gets all the excitement. You get to win, you get to do some cool shots, you might lose a lot, which brings you back to wanting to win, and that can all happen within 25 minutes. And team and people, I mean, interacting with people is absolutely fantastic, especially if you have a, I suppose, a community that's non-toxic. And that's really hard to find in a lot of multiplayer games, but it exists and it is possible. So now I suppose the question becomes, is it our time that's changing in our age, or is it the fact that the industry has moved in that area? Well, I think it's a bit of both, because one company that makes a multiplayer game that was very basic, people jumped on it and they realized that people were spending more time on multiplayer games, and so on, the company and the industry sort of said, well, let's put more effort into this multiplayer side, and let's make more games with that end, and it all came for a circle where they just make multiplayer-only games, requiring an internet connection, potentially requiring a subscription, and, and so on. So, the problem is, we may still have the same amount of time as we did before, but this generation has become a generation that requires things at a snap of a finger. Apple releases a new iPhone every year. Android also, there's always a new phone, and you swap it out as soon as you can, because you just want it now. Multiplayer is an experience that you get now with people, and it's a Longevity means that you can keep coming back to it and not have to always find the new thing or the new single player and spend a large amount of time in this one world to get the benefit and excitement or that quick release that you get in multiplayer games. There is obviously still room for single player experiences in the world. I do believe that we still need to be told a story where we engage with the characters in a more amount of time than two hours in a movie. We learn about their pasts and we really, really get into it. And for me, The Witcher was that for a while. And even now when I jumped on two weeks ago, I was said to myself, I'll play for an hour. Three hours later, I got so immersed in the story that was happening, I stayed a lot longer. But that meant three hours that I could do something else. I could have played 40 matches of a multiplayer game and had potentially the same amount of endorphin releases, scientifically speaking, as this game for three hours. But there is still a place for a single player 
experiences. I think they just need to be more fleshed out because now I feel the industry has moved on so far to multiplayer that the single player gets very, very little attention, gets very boring, and it's a very small release that just isn't gonna do it for the people who love single player experiences because sometimes you don't want to deal with toxic people sometimes you don't want to communicate and you don't want to have team objectives you want to get explore you want to shoot some bots and you just want to feel like you're the superhero in that story and that's really the difference there's a bit of a superhero here and then you're just part of this thousands of people playing a single game that unless you're in the top one percent nobody's gonna notice you but in this single player experience you are it you are the main story and hopefully obviously depending on the game and the character you're also the good guy or the bad guy whatever so guys all I have to say is we do potentially still have the time to spend on games but I think society doesn't allow it anymore the industry just doesn't allow you to spend that much more time on it because the games that are coming out are very rare where you can actually spend hundreds of hours into a single player experience you want to play multiplayer because you want to engage with people we have become a community that wants to engage with through social media through gaming and so it is important to also say that the multiplayer is not going away i think a little bit more effort in the single player side of things will definitely benefit both types of people because we're all different and maybe one day i'll be able to sit down and finish witcher 3. Guys, thank you very much for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you have enough time to play single player games? Do you have enough time to play games in general? Or do you just want that quick release with a quick game of Dota or maybe a quick game of Battlefield Rainbow Siege? I mean, these games, they're timed 20, 25 minutes every time. And it only goes over time when the teams are very, very equal. So think about it this way. Not many teams are poised against each other that are very equal because the time it would take to play is a lot longer. So most games end up being 20 minutes because there's always one side that's going to win and the system knows it, the matchmaking system knows it. Guys, thank you very much for watching. I'll catch you next time. I hope I didn't blow anybody's minds with that final note, our open Pandora's box. I'll catch you later and please subscribe, like, and let me know what you think. Bye.